Far Cry 6 is a video game. Sorry about that. There was nothing I could do to stop it. Sometimes things happen in life that we have no control over. Far Cry as a franchise has been in steady decline for nearly a decade now, with Far Cry Blood Dragon being essentially its Actung baby moment. And it's been all downhill from there. It has had the occasional uplifting points. Trash in the game mechanics by abusing the attack helicopter was always fun. And I can't think of anything else. Far Cry is essentially a meme in video games now. You find yourself on an island with a parachute, a wingsuit and a weak weapon. Then progressively work your way through an even weaker plot, sequentially unlocking areas of the map, almost always involving taking out some conveniently placed base full of numbskulls and activating some form of tower or something disguised to be less obviously a tower because people have taken the piss out of this mechanic so much over the years. Disclaimer. I'll be honest about the fact that I struggled to play this game and probably only racked up 20 to 30 hours, even though Uplay says I have played for two hours and only killed 61 NPCs because even that broke on the first day of play. I did my best to enjoy as much of this game as I possibly could because I am duty bound to review it and so many of you wanted to hear my opinion. So yes, I am truly suffering for this shot. I'm playing on a mid-range rig with a steadily increasing level of distaste for this franchise and a low tolerance for weak cookie cutter sequels and monetization in video games. I've been playing the game on action mode and at the time of writing, I swear at least a part of my brain has dribbled out of my fucking nose and I don't have that much to spare. So what is Far Cry 6? You play the part of Hipster. You live on the tropical island dictatorship of Borathon, a delightful Cubanesque cliché covered in zip lines, towers and conveniently placed piles of junk and collectibles. You hang around with a bunch of other hipsters, some of whom wear camo items of clothing, something that would get you immediately interrogated and tortured for a whole weekend if you pulled that kind of shit in a real totalitarian military dictatorship. You end up joining the resistance when a bunch of soldiers and tanks roll into dodge and your idiot friend spontaneously decides that hurling abuse and a bottle at them would be a good thing to do. When they rightly and correctly shoot him in the fucking head, instead of sniggering, taking a picture and shouting Darwin Awards for the win, you get all upset because you are a hipster too. You run away, but they shoot your other idiot friend. At this point, most people would be thinking that this was a golden opportunity to find less stupid people to hang around with. But because it's a video game, instead you decide that becoming an insurgent makes far more sense. You are tasked with the job of systematically taking out locations, gathering collectibles and struggling to avoid face planting into the ever present online microtransactions. It's basically just like most Far Cry games, only slightly more annoying, considerably more woke and entirely pampering to the Twitter political landscape of 2021 champagne socialist politico types. Functionality and fuckery. Well, I guess it's time to talk about Uplay, Uplay Plus and always online games. Ubisoft has generally been sliding down the greasy water slide of greed for a long time now, but I guess this perfectly sums up how the balance between player and publisher has moved on the spectrum. I decided to save myself Boku Dollar by playing this game on Uplay Plus. I noticed how when I signed up, they later sent me a confirmation email dated for the previous day, so I lost one day of Uplay Plus right out of the gate. It's only 4% of my money, but it's my money they pilfered. I guess I could email customer support, but one of my mates is still waiting to get his launch day bonuses from the Division 2. He's been arguing with Ubisoft customer support since February 2019. So frankly, I just assumed that money was lost. 
Then I noticed my Uplay reward points had frittered down to almost nothing. Because Ubisoft slapped on an expiration date on them retroactively, so my big pile of reward points that I'd gathered over the years has now virtually expired. Then I couldn't play the game for a few hours because Uplay was down. Because that's the thing with always online bullshit. It's not just you who has to be online. If somebody at Ubisoft decides to have a donut and fuck off to the box for a wank and the servers go down, that game you paid for doesn't work. And that is basically where we are at with Ubisoft these days. I pay money for a game, they steal 4% of my money immediately, steal nearly all of my reward points, and then I can't actually play the fucking game because they can't unfuck themselves long enough to make it work. Maybe a little less wokey, a little less choky, and a little bit more worky might be in order. When it did run, it ran pretty well, with fairly reasonable system requirements. In fact, fair play on this front. Recently, I'm noticing a horrible trend of publishers optimising their games for next-gen console and then only making a half assed attempt to make it backwards compatible on PC. I'm pretty sure that's what happened with Deathloop, for example. Well, Far Cry 6 could probably run as badly as any other Ubisoft game on any PC system. I would note I did have some good old-fashioned bugs. It's actually quite nostalgic to get around to talking about bugs in a world where most AAA games are so deeply entrenched in other, more serious fuckery, I don't normally have the time to discuss things that are merely half-broken. But yes, I did experience invisible NPCs. Sadly, it was a group of elite headhunters, so that basically screwed up that encounter. I had very unresponsive NPCs that I had to jab multiple times with the interact key before they spoke to me. The helicopter controls were a bit shit, and the controls tended to stutter sometimes. I had doppelganger NPCs within feet of each other. I swear a couple of times I experienced save reversion and lost huge chunks of progress. I had quests cancelling, quest tracking cancelling, when I did other stuff, Everything seemed to be a bit of an effort and a bit on the piss. And don't even get me started about how annoying it is to constantly trip over the fucking pet crocodile. Oh yeah, you have, and I quote, a pet crocodile. Look, crocodiles are fucking dinosaurs and their tiny little reptile brains don't even possess the parts required for relationships and affection. Sure, there was that one crocodile, Pocho, that bonded with that dude, but that crocodile had been previously shot in the head. Then again, a lion adopted an antelope, but it doesn't mean I'm jumping in the lion's cage wearing a deer outfit anytime soon. This argument was probably settled best on the internet when someone asked if a crocodile can learn to love a human. The best answer was, yes, the way a human loves chicken. The crocodile pet was stupid. However, I digress. I would note that whatever the fuck is up with Uplay, cloud saves and connections to the servers, well that shit needs fixing at this point. Sorry to get all high tech and intellectual, but according to many IT specialists, apparently a primary condition of any information technology service solution is that it should reliably not be fucked. Anyway, overall the game ran about as well as the last 50 or 60 Far Cry sequels. But yes, from time to time it did bug out or crash, causing me to lose between 5 and 30 minutes of progress. A trivial issue you might say. Well just remember your lessons from Supernatural. What seems like a few minutes here lasts for an eternity in hell. Those lost 5 minutes playing Far Cry 6 felt a lot longer for me. The infinite respawn bug is a thing. It's hard to tell how much is just the way the game was designed and how much is just a bug that passed playtesting because they didn't do any playtesting. But either through ignorance or ignorance of design, the repop is dumber than a box of rocks, and people are actually shelving the game because of it. I even saw a community manager on the subreddit who was trying to skirt around the issue of why this wasn't caught in playtesting. 
Don't bother looking for it. I'm sure they've been fired and the comment has been deleted by now. I also experienced resetting quests. I did a tank heist mission. Everything was fine and dandy, but then the computer say no and just reset me, respawning me in the middle of three enemy patrols. Fuck's sake. And then I couldn't run back. They appear to have chilled a bit on the monetization for now. Just kidding. They've just hidden it in game. You can go here, spend your hard earned cash on premium in game currency, then just go into the game and buy all the shit you like. Because let's face it, according to Ubisoft, it wouldn't be a video game unless you could buy all the loot with your credit card. Or your mum's credit card. I'm not sexist. Let's not forget that in Far Cry 5, every single vendor was also a pedo vendor and nearly every other random patrol was a monetized vendor too. So it technically was the video game with the most amount of microtransaction vendors in the history of video games. Oh, and during the little cinematic flourish, you get when you cap something important, the game takes away critical elements of your HUD, like the barely functional minimap radar. So if you are still actively engaged in combat, you are temporarily blinded for purely aesthetic rather than functional reasons. That was a bad decision. And talking of which, Far Cry 6 has the most functionally dysfunctional minimap I have ever used. It's useless. It seems to have some kind of weird scaling going on, like the distance on the minimap is not directly representative. So close dots are accurate, but as things get further away, the distances scale down on the minimap and get compressed. Maybe it was just broke or deliberately inaccurate, but I'm that guy who screams at people in video games too, and I quote, use your fucking minimap. And I'm so used to using one that I could probably navigate my way through an entire fucking video game with a black screen, just using my minimap. But for whatever reason, Far Cry 6's minimap was borderline fucking useless. And so unhelpful at times, I just stopped using it and systematically searched with my own eyes instead. Gunplay and combat. The weapons and gunplay in this game are best described as farcical. It's a masterclass in unbalanced weapons, spongy NPCs, and the sort of ballistic science nonsense that would be scrawled in poop by a toddler on the side of a kitchen cabinet. Early game, I had a FN FAL assault rifle, which hit like a pea shooter, frequently requiring mag dumps to take out targets. Luckily, I was also armed with a unique 380 caliber pop gun, which because of the magical wizardry of Ubisoft anti second amendment logic was the most effective weapon I had. Apparently it had enchanted bullets of armor penetration, so it made short work of even the highest level armored enemies. I don't know whether they wanted to nerf guns early game to force stealth gameplay or whether the game mechanics were a deliberate troll, but whatever the cause, the gunplay felt dreadful and unsatisfying. You know the old saying, don't bring a knife to a gunfight? Well this felt like bringing a pillow and a baby comforter. Want to shoot that dude with your large caliber assault rifle? Well it won't do barely any damage because he's wearing armor and you haven't got armor piercing rounds. Want to shoot that other dude with your other large caliber assault rifle? Well it won't do barely any damage to him either because he's wearing a thin cotton shirt and you are now using armor piercing rounds. Because everybody knows that if you wear a thin cotton khaki tropical issue army shirt, you can take 20 large high velocity rounds straight through the fucking chest and they won't hurt you at all because they were armor piercing and went straight through you. When a 380 caliber pop gun does more DPS to a target than a 50 cal machine gun, you know you're in trouble. Let's put this in perspective. A 380 pistol has about 210 foot pounds of energy. A 30 aught 6 rifle round is very powerful, about 2,500 foot pounds of energy. A 50 BMG round has about 17,000 foot pounds of force. This is a 380 APC. This is a 50 cal BMG. But apparently, 
this will do more damage than this against certain targets because Ubisoft's rock, paper, scissors gun balancing in Far Cry 6. Hey guys, I'm Jerry Mitchell and I know what you're thinking. You got the big 50 out and I got a block of clear ballistics, ballistic gelatin here. Look, armor piercing is not a magical spell that you spray on bullets that make them better at piercing armor than vastly more powerful ammunition. Sure, a 50 cal armor piercing round will penetrate more armor than a normal 50 cal BMG round. But all 50 cal rounds will penetrate armor better than any 380, 9mm, 5.56 or smaller rounds. This is because of the sheer amounts of energy involved. I could rant all day about why the gun mechanics in Far Cry 6 make less sense than Anthony Fauci and frankly I am tempted. But I will merely say this. This combat system would make sense if it was transposed to a fantasy or sci-fi game. If the little green enemies are vulnerable to fire and the little red enemies are vulnerable to bleed, it would work. But this kind of fantasy nonsense game mechanics should be kept well away from shooting games and guns. It's horrible and it doesn't make sense. The firearms mechanics in Far Cry 6 have strayed so far from reality that frankly I don't think the words firearms or mechanics can actually be applied to this game. They are magical boomsticks that do magical damage based on your magical bullets. Don't be tricked into thinking they behave like guns just because they're shaped like them and named similar to them. These are magic wands painted to look like ballistic weapons. Other than superficial cosmetic similarities, they have nothing in common. Oh, and for the record, I've heard people say Far Cry 6 is not bullet spongy. I think that's ridiculous. When you can put 30 rounds from a Browning M2 50 cal machine gun into a skinny dude and he's still running around because you ain't shooting him with the right kind of ammo, that is bullet spongy. And anyone saying, yeah, you have to use the right ammo, doesn't negate this fact. I don't care if it's bullet spongy when you use the wrong ammo. It's still bullet spongy when that happens. I'm sorry, but the firearm system is absolute fucking nonsense and anyone who disagrees with me is welcome to put on a yellow plastic biohazard suit and get their friend to shoot them in the leg with a 50 cal and you can use whatever type of bullet you like. I am quietly confident that your leg will be catastrophically blown in half in a giant cloud of blood vapour and shrapnel bone fragments and whilst you're writhing around on the floor in agony you will certainly not be shouting, I wouldn't have felt that at all if he'd been using the wrong type of ammo. The other huge failing of the game is the whole cluster fuckiness of combat and particularly how this plays out at the quintessential goat rodeo of checkpoints. Basically the game is trying to make you feel like a gorilla. So far so good. However, what actually played out for me was that the more you fight the more enemies show up to defend sometimes seemingly spawning out of thin air on the opposite sides of buildings and sometimes magically out of nowhere. Essentially, this is a shooter that provides disincentives for shooting the enemy. The more you kill the enemy, the more enemies show up, sometimes with missions descending into farce as attack helicopters, patrol boats and elite forces roll up to join the shit show. And if you do just cark it, and get the fuck out of there and jump in the water to swim away, some tropical fish starts biting you in the arse or trying to swim up your piss hole. Basically, it's a shooter that punishes you for shooting. I can see what they were trying to achieve and credit to them for that I guess. They were trying to discourage all out combat and trying to force the player into a certain hit and run style of guerrilla play. I would note however that in one specific area they did succeed impressively. They certainly discouraged me from engaging in open combat. In fact, they discouraged me from playing the actual fucking game full stop. Oh, and by the way, it is pronounced gorilla, like a fucking ape. Or monkey, fuck I don't know. 
Oh, and also, let's not forget how this pans out at checkpoints after combat has resolved. I successfully took control of a checkpoint and had to try multiple times to pick up a quest because immediately after taking it over, every 45 fucking seconds, some new enemy vehicle would roll up to the checkpoint and start another fight. We were all collectively locked in a perpetual combat loop. And then the game decided we had done too much violence and sent the attack helicopters in. At that point, I just jumped in my car and fucked off and let them get on with it. The difficulty level is binary. You have story mode and action mode. Basically that's easy mode and annoying as piss mode. And dear lord, I regretted not picking story mode. That said, at least I got to see the full horror of the combat system thanks to picking action mode. So that was some compensation. In Far Cry 6, you have gear. About which I quickly gave not one fuck. Basically all the gear comes with specific perks. One pair of skiddies might magically give you more sniper ammo, and another helmet made out of coke bottles and directly ripped off from this homemade respirator video on YouTube protects you from gas. The one thing all the gear has in common is that it makes the player look like a cock. You find and buy gear and select the items, usually based on whatever will protect you from whichever weapons the spam spawning bullet sponge NPCs just use to kill you. 8 seconds before you were just about to finish the last quest. Personally the only gear I would have been interested in would have perks that protect me from resetting quests, the infinite spawn bug, and having weapons drop with idiotic perks. If they could throw in a pair of sneakers that stopped you play freaking out, well that would be a bonus too. Seriously, I'm not sure what they were thinking about the gear. I get the whole post-apocalyptic Mad Max vibe is alive and kicking in post-apocalyptic games. And that part is important. But this is a revolutionary game set in some timeless, Cubanesque 50s slash 60s old fashioned shithole. I remember one NPC warning me, don't stay too close to the soldiers or they'll get suspicious of you. Frankly, my dear, I am sceptical that proximity is going to be a major factor when it comes to my detection by diligent soldiers sniffing around the community. I would postulate that the bigger problem would be I'm wearing a fucking homemade rocket pack, a bright yellow homemade respirator, an assortment of multicoloured armour pieces made out of scrap metal and colanders and paint tins, and I have three long guns covertly stuck up my arse. I am reasonably confident that dressing up like an acid casualty Mad Max cosplayer from Burning Man whilst clutching a fat stash of heavy weaponry on an island where the kids can't even afford shoes might, just fucking might, look slightly suspicious. And if that isn't enough, did I mention that I'm riding our fucking zebra? I mean, what the actual fuck are they thinking at Ubisoft? Do people sneak off to the toilets to smoke crack and drop tabs? How does this thematically make any sense? We are expected to believe this is an island full of paramilitaries and armed forces, all patrolling around, desperately trying to sniff out the rebel guerrillas. Are these soldiers standing around saying stuff like, I can't figure out who the insurgents are. It could be that old lady. She's been acting really suspicious. I'm also keeping an eye on that guy over there playing dominoes in the bar. Something's just isn't right about him. But I'm absolutely certain it's not the guy carrying the rocket launcher and the fucking light machine gun. He's over there wearing a jetpack and a gas mask. He's hanging around outside the entrance to the armory. He seems legit. The game, the story and mechanics have no internal consistency or coherence. There is no integral cohesion to the game and it all fundamentally makes no fucking sense. I get the aesthetic and if this was Rage 2 or Fallout 3 it might even make a little bit of sense but this art design choice was like having spacesuits in Lord of the Rings. 
it doesn't fit in a game where apparently most of the time I need to keep, and I fucking quote, a low profile. You can't have a game where the player is supposed to fit in and not get spotted by soldiers and then dress them up in a combat-oriented Mardi Gras costume. I would note that Helicopter Carnage is basically broken now. Maybe it's because they wanted to stop lazy, unmotivated douche nozzles, like my fine self, from simply flying around, nuking everything from 1,000 feet in the air. But whatever the reasons, they seem to have gone out of their way to break chopper strafing. The introduction of anti-air defences I get. Until you neutralise them, they shoot rockets at you and you are likely going to get immediately face fucked. Fair deal. I'm talking about the fact that they have entirely gimped the mechanics. For a start, they've introduced some kind of auto-leveling mechanic, so it's incredibly hard to maintain a decent angle of attack. Every time you do anything whilst you're trying to aim, the nose wants to pull up automatically, frequently resulting in an inability to maintain fire on target, either because of computational limitations, a desire to reduce easy targets, or absolute and total cataclysmic incompetence. The spawn rate is also balked in helicopters. Basically, if you are on the ground, on foot, you can't safely stand near the road because military trucks, carriers, tankers, jeeps and patrols come past so regularly they might actually end up running you over. They are constant. But jump in a helicopter and try and find a target and you ain't gonna find shit. They just don't spawn. The occasional vehicle might appear, but clearly the spawn rate tanks the second you take to the skies. Yet another example of the comprehensive, thorough job they have achieved in sucking every last drop of joy out of this franchise. Oh, and did I mention that practically every foot soldier can shoot down your helicopter in a few bullets, and one guy actually threw a grenade up and hit me? On a positive note though, you can have a zebra mount. So what do I make of Far Cry 6 overall? Well, obviously, I was immediately shocked to discover that I was on an island, running around doing chores, unlocking bases, hunting around gathering piles of scrap and crapola, collecting guns and clothing, climbing up things. Shocking! Absolutely! Who would have predicted that? This apple fell closer to the tree than some other sequels, if I'm honest. Slavery was mentioned in the first two minutes of dialogue. That pretty much set the tone for the game. Then there was a comment about the United States being an inherently racist nation, despite America being a home to 60 million people of Latino and Hispanic descent. Don't be fooled for an instant. This game might be set in a tropical island, but these guys sure as shit sound like a bunch of Starbucks Instagram hipster revolutionaries to me. There were a ludicrous amount of executions in the cutscenes and establishing shots. This island ain't that big, yet I saw such huge amounts of wanton military street executions that if they carry on that way for a month, there will be nobody left to shoot. I know it's for dramatic effect, but it's very stupid indeed. During the scene where they were rounding people up to work in the labour camps, I saw them shoot nearly everyone they saw and round up precisely nobody. Imagine an army unit sent into town with the explicit order to round people up for a labour camp because the government was desperately short of labourers. What do you think would happen when they returned to base and informed their commanding officer, well we didn't get any labourers but we managed to execute every single man of working age we found? I don't mean to be nitpicky but that is technically the exact opposite of what you were told to do, right? I don't think their commanding officer would be very happy with that outcome. The woke revolutionary army of hipsters allow a moderate level of weapon modification. It's got Last of Us levels of weapon modding and crafting. Enough to be there, but a fraction of New Vegas levels of involvement. Essentially, you get to choose the category of ammunition you can use on a non-unique gun, a scope maybe, and some other tat. 
It's weapon modding according to Barry Basic. Enough to be there, but nowhere near enough to make you feel like you genuinely customised a gun. The magical backpack of nonsense, i.e. your supremo weapon, is basically your special from the division. This seems to be where all the energy went. You get multiple backpacks to choose from, and the modification can actually bend it to your will. Possibly the only thing I actually enjoyed about the weapons was in fact my rocket launching Kachusha backpack, which fired a volley of self-targeting rockets for some low effort kills. So at least I got to zone out once every five minutes. Personally, I'm quite impressed that someone could make homemade optically targeting micro missiles out of baked bean cans and baler twine. So God bless La Revolution. Some of the base design was good, as is usually the case with my playstyle, I would invariably cock up the infiltration, I would alert all the guards, it would turn into a giant cake and ass party, and once I had butchered everyone and the dust had settled, I would search the base and usually find about 8 stealth methods of entering the base, which would have been much easier and smarter to use if I had been bothered to check. Access from the water, multiple ways to climb in from the back, hidden sewer access, you know the drill. Some effort at least was put into this, and frankly, had I been capable of effort, I probably could have done a lot more stealthing. However, then completing the mission would have taken longer, which was perhaps the point of the design, although it was an intolerable option for me personally. The combat lends itself to fantasists, wizards, and people slash children who know nothing about guns. Not even kidding. If you neither know nor care about how firearms work, you will probably not mind the balked firearms mechanics. You will just see it as a bunch of arbitrary codified rules you need to learn. Like rock, paper, scissors, and you'll just crack on with it, accepting the fact that you need to learn an entire new fictional reality to make your boomsticks go. However, if you liked playing Battlefield 3 because of the gunplay but felt the balancing was a bit unrealistic, then Far Cry 6 is going to feel like SpongeBob SquarePants. Or Krull. There are multiple base mechanics. When you first set up your base, you enter a rather jarring third person mode and now have a little base to get bored in. You can upgrade it and add facilities so you can be bored in comfort. There are mini games and you can upgrade your shops so you can buy higher quality cosplay outfits with in game or real money. There is even a mission mini game where you can send your little social media Viva la Revolution gullible minions off to wage war by proxy. It's just like most real revolutions. As the boss man, you get to send out enthusiastic, expendable peons to do the fighting and dying for you, whilst you sit back at base camp, cockfighting, or playing dominoes. It's probably one of the most realistic aspects of the game. I'm not quite sure why it's suddenly third person every time you enter the base. Maybe because the entire base mechanics are lifted out of some other Ubisoft game. Fuck knows. But possibly, it's so that you have an opportunity to see your pretty little outfits in third person, so that you can fully bask in the glory of how ridiculous you look. Or maybe it's just to encourage children to buy in-game currency and go and spend it in the shop. Look. It's very hard to care about this game. Part of the problem is that after 17 years of Far Cry games, where for nearly a decade they have all been a bit shit, I think I'm suffering from an extreme case of Far Cry fatigue. Far Cry fatigue is a bit like PTSD, only with slightly worse memories. I guess it's also hard to care about the game because it doesn't seem to care about itself. I mean, I would love to go back and revive those gorilla dudes, but who cares? If I run away, the encounter will just reset. I didn't notice anyone important dying or any quests failing because I abandoned essential plot characters to certain death. The essential characters are essential, and the non-essential characters are expendable, and largely unlikable and completely forgettable. Similarly, why give a shit about your low-level guerrilla comrades? Because the second you drive away from that checkpoint, some truck will YOLO in there, blow up, 
wipe out half of them, and then a tank will eventually roll in too. It doesn't make sense. It's chaos for chaos's sake, and not in a good way. There is no point having an emotional investment in anything, because it will either respawn, get replaced, or get crushed by a fucking tank, because of the ridiculous beta levels of unpolished spawn mechanics. The fact that I have rage quit out of this game more than once speaks volumes. I'm very used to playing shit games, and I rarely ever rage quit. The game just deviates from its own logic too often. Too frequently you will do some random engagement, and then suddenly out of nowhere, three trucks roll up and I'm surrounded by multiple laser accurate guys bum rushing me. There are just too many random factors that collide and make the game's logic fall apart. There is a difference between Pistols at Dawn duels and Russian Roulette. Too much of the time, completely random game mechanics collide and turn your quick side quests into Butch and Cassidy's last stand. But the reason I rage quit was not the death, it was because when I respawned, for some reason, it set me back to a point before where I started the previous main quest that I was halfway through. And yes, when I started all over again, the radio was on in the fucking car again. The game seems not to like you deviating from whatever quest you are directly on at any moment, even if that quest involves doing multiple things dotted miles apart from each other. When you die, you get sent back to where you were 20 minutes ago. In a drooling, bubblegum popping game like Far Cry 6, it feels like having some of your life stolen from you. I would also note that there seems to be something slightly off with the enemy AI, it's hard to isolate, but if I were to take a wild guess, I would say that some of the enemy NPCs have an X-ray lock on you. I can't prove this, and I can't be fucked to try, and it's more of a feeling. It's like the AI sometimes continue to track me when I'd broken line of sight. I'm not saying the enemy AI was hard or intelligent, I'm saying it sometimes felt like it wasn't fully programmed. It felt like sometimes they collectively had a lock on you until you entirely broke contact and re-entered stealth. It's subtle, and mostly based on video game faith rather than evidence. But you know when you get that feeling that the AI is cheating, and knows where you are at times when it shouldn't know. Like it's using game information about where your location is, that the NPC shouldn't actually know. There were just these little moments when I would duck behind cover and the enemy would shoot at my precise position as I scurried about, and I found myself asking, how the fuck do they know I'm precisely here, scurrying this way, and not the other way? Far Cry 6's little snippets of dialogue betray an ideological rot at its core. It's a game with daddy issues. There are multiple references to parenting and therapy. America is described as a skin colour racist country, yet the foot soldiers in this revolution are expendable, which is probably one of the few aspects of the game which is accurate, because most revolutionaries are pawns in someone else's game, risking their lives to oust one set of bastards for some other equally greedy set of power hungry bastards. It's quite unfortunate in a way that they used Cuba as an analogue. For all their faults, Castro and Guevara, ruthless shits as they were, at least believed in what they were doing. In fact, one issue with the game was that I don't think it really knew what point it was making, and somehow managed to fuck up making it. On a surface level, it was a parable about totalitarianism, but the revolutionaries were just as ruthless and murderous as the military. They were clearly drawing parallels with Cuba's contemporary biotech industry, which was odd since even during the trade embargo the US made export exemption because Cuba's drugs and vaccines were so useful and cheap. It was also odd because the biotech industry in Cuba was a post-revolutionary success for the communists. The revolutionaries frankly seemed like cut out stereotypes from the contemporary activist scene in the US, 
and frankly seem to be more aligned with that subculture than any genuine revolutionary ethos from pre-communist Cuba. I strongly suggest reading a selection of articles about the political aspects of this game written by people who actually give a fuck about Far Cry 6. But personally, and this is more of a hunch, it felt like the core message of the narrative was anti-capitalist, anti-establishment and woke. But they set the story in a kind of confused and thinly disguised version of Cuba as some kind of smokescreen. The narrative director, Navid Kavara, has made some rambling social media statements about not wanting to make a simple binary statement. But I'm not convinced that the confusing mixed messages of the narrative are genuine or deliberate creative choices. I think it's just the kind of confusion that results from having a vague set of values you want to promote while simultaneously trying not to do or say something that pisses off the marketing department or gamers. In his press release, Navid Kavara cites the following key issues. The rise of fascism in a nation, the costs of imperialism, forced labour, the need for free and fair elections, LGBTQ plus rights, and more. On top of this, it's worth additionally noting that this is Ubisoft we're talking about. They are grade A woke posers and posturers. The game describes America as a racist nation. Navid Kavara has his pronouns in his bio. He's banging on about imperialism, and I have no doubt he has done his fair share of kneeling over the past year. So I will let everyone draw their own conclusions about what the core political message this game is really trying to send. To me at least, it comes across as a confused message about progressive wokeness wrapped up in a thinly veiled khaki disguise of 1950s revolution. I guess the best way I can put it is this. When one of the revolutionaries started banging on about free expression, I just scoffed and thought, yeah, she's full of shit. She seems more like the type that wants the right to say whatever the fuck she likes, but would try and get someone cancelled if they had the wrong opinions. Look, if I seem confused about this game's narrative, well that's because I am. In my defence, however, I'm less confused than this game. Because Far Cry 6 makes no sense at all. Oh, and did I mention the characters are shit too? I didn't give a fuck about any of the characters in this game apart from the dictator dude. He had his shit squared away. Everyone else ranged between forgettable or annoying. But I guess that's what happens with corporate friendly stories. Everyone has to get past a bunch of censors, senior managers and legal. And then they have to make sure it gets past the Chinese censors too. I don't blame the writers completely. Writing for a AAA publisher like Ubisoft must be like trying to be a journalist for a North Korean newspaper. You've got bigger problems to worry about than the truth and being entertaining. Trying not to get terminated, literally and figuratively. Or choked out by your manager in a bar. Haha, <laughs> nobody saw that one coming. I can't help but have the feeling that Far Cry 6 was only made because it needed to be made. It's an existing lucrative franchise. Ubisoft has a lot of cheap outsourced developer labour now, especially in China. They need to make some kind of Far Cry game this year, so they just thought, let's grab the Far Cry cookie cutter machine out of the cupboard, bang out another one, and spend twice what we spend on labour on advertising and paying off for positive reviews. Rarely have I played a game that seems so determined to piss off the player. From the intentional enemy spawn rate, all the way through to the accidental infinite spawn bug. The combat is annoying, the bugs are annoying, the bullet sponge enemies are annoying, the repop is annoying, the game is annoying. I don't think for a second this is entirely deliberate and planned. Ubisoft is too tight-fisted to pony up sufficient budget to bankroll a shitfest of this comprehensive scope and organise the whole thing with intent. So I'm sure much of it is just good old fashioned failure. And that's a shame really, because there was a spark of a good idea in this game. 
the idea of making the game more hit and run and less balls to the wall combat bullet storm was a novel concept, sadly soiled by so many other cruddy decisions and painfully badly implemented systems. The annoyance is hard baked into this game, just like you have to turn the radio off every time you grab a vehicle. Every. Damn. Time. Just like my quests resetting halfway through for no reason, or the number of times I've died because of the game doing something stupid or random. And don't even get me started on the anti-aircraft defences that respawned several more times during the time it took me to compile this video. And just to hammer that one home, I'm getting fucking sick of having to turn off the radio every time I get in the car. You're not funny Ubisoft. It was a cute flourish in 2013, but it's boring now. This joke has been told too many times. Out of the interests of absolute fairness, I decided to try and compile some of the positive aspects of this game. After all, nobody just wants to hear me take an hour long dump on a Ubisoft game. <laughs> okay, lots of people do, and some people would like me to carry on for two or three hours, but here are some of the good things about Far Cry 6. It goes without saying that Giancarlo Esposito is excellent. No surprises there. It's Giancarlo fucking Esposito. Of course he gave a great performance. If Giancarlo Esposito was doing commercials for fucking hair removal cream, I would probably buy some and test it out on my eyebrows. Setting aside the uncanny valley issues caused by taking such a subtle and nuanced actor and representing him using, albeit sophisticated, yet nevertheless mocap technology, his presence was still a positive in the game. I think about 62% of his talent was lost in the wash though, since he was like a metaphorical low resolution version of himself. But he brought some gravity to what is, let's face it, a bubblegum video game. They had some reasonable machete action. The fluting made it look like some kind of hybrid between a traditional spring steel machete and a marbles design. And it also had some weird gut hook on the end of it, which frankly isn't a particular common feature of a machete. It certainly wasn't death loop levels of pro machete action, but I guess they had a little light machete carnage, which was nice. I am however unconvinced by the habitual stabbing going on in game. Machetes tend to be relatively thin and made from spring steels, so if you repeatedly stab people with one, it's highly likely to end up getting permanently bent out of shape. Like me after playing this video game. The cockfighting minigame was absolutely brilliant. I'm not sure what point they were trying to make here. Were they trying to make an anti-woke statement, or did someone think this was a nod to authenticity? I neither know nor care. The important thing is that cockfighting in a video game is hilarious, and hopefully triggers some people. I'm actually looking forward to the next Far Cry game now, if only for the potential of having a dogfighting, badger baiting, or possibly a fox hunting mini game. I will for now live in hope that Far Cry 6 will eventually get a seal clubbing DLC. I'd buy that for a dollar. In Far Cry 6 they introduced air defences. Clearly it was noted that in previous Far Cry iterations you could just stick your hand in your pocket, buy an attack chopper from the in-game microtransaction store and then go around strafing all your targets from the air. Strangely enough, just like you could do with Ghost Recon Failpoint. It's good news from a game dynamics point of view, but obviously from a personal perspective it's horrible, because it meant I had to play longer to do the review. Anything that drags out the experience and makes progress slower in a Far Cry game is frankly a bad call. There are lots of radiological warning signs. That's nice. I'm a big fan of nuclear material, so playing a game where I was hunting down depleted uranium felt quite satisfying. There is decent levels of mayhem. You can drive down the road, smashing up the farmer's fences, running over their cattle and generally running over peons. With zero consequences. 
you get a little warning and told not to do it, but I'm pretty sure they have some kind of pee on murder timer. So as long as you don't do it too frequently in quick succession, you don't get any punishment. Funny that this game actually must have a pee on death timer. I wonder what they called that code. I did personally find it very amusing that the only area where this game excels is the same as Watch Dogs Legion. It's the entirely pointless vehicular manslaughter. It's the whole drive around smashing shit up minigame. I can run people over for hours. Some credit to Ubisoft is due here. They did at least try something new with the whole gorilla keep a low profile thing and the rock paper scissors approach to combat. Don't get me wrong, it's a fucking catastrophe. But credit where credit is due. They did at least try and put a slight veneer of freshness over the liver spots of this tired old franchise. I kind of see what they were trying to do with this whole hit and run guerrilla playstyle and perhaps I would have leaned into it a bit better if it wasn't combined with such a fuck up weapon system and bolt spawn mechanic. And I really do think the weapon system is a fuck up. I wasted a load of time trying to complete a quest for a high end sniper rifle only to discover that it was a unique weapon so I couldn't change the mods and it came off the shelf with fire damage and no silencer. I can live without the silencer, but fire damage? What the fuck were they thinking? With a sniper rifle you want high alpha strike damage. You want to hit once and hit hard, from range and preferably silently. So what does Far Cry 6 give you? A low alpha damage sniper rifle with a bonus that does damage over time and sets the person on fire. I mean, how much can you fuck one weapon up? This is a sniper rifle that is unlikely to provide a one shot one kill, makes a very loud noise and just in case that is not balked enough, it sets the person on fire so they run around screaming their heads off, alerting all the other guards and making a quick follow up shot virtually impossible. As a long range covert sniping weapon, this gun is less effective than a giant fucking catapult that fires air raid sirens at the enemy. At least getting hit in the head by a 30 pound siren travelling at 80 miles an hour would probably one shot a guard before it alerts the whole fucking base. Which is more than I can say for this very time consuming sniper rifle. Sometimes this game is smart and sometimes it is dumber than the dumbest things I've ever seen in video games. Things like this demonstrate a profound misunderstanding of combat mechanics or that someone just did stuff for lols because they don't care. I did glean a small amount of delight from the mission minigame. It wasn't actually fun in and of itself, I just thought it was funny sending these idiots to their deaths. I would have preferred to have been on the side of the dictator. I guess a close second was being in a position where I could send rando rebels on stupid missions to die pointlessly. You have to get your pleasure where you can. Okay, I got nothing else. Well at least I tried to be positive, you have to give me that much. Perhaps this will end up being my legacy, testament to my compassion, sympathy and charity. For all my myriad of personal faults, at least I can say that I tried to say something positive about Far Cry 6. That alone is proof that I am capable of empathy and pity. Well I guess it's time to get out the old bolt gun and put this zebra out of its misery. Essentially, Far Cry is the Christmas music of video game franchises. It comes around periodically, it's a bit shit, but there's something safe and familiar about it. It somehow makes you feel strangely nostalgic about some vague good times you had in the past. Not that you can specifically remember what they were. A tactic I often like to deploy on things in life is this. Take a step back and ask, for what problem is this the solution? Is the world in need of another Far Cry sequel? Fuck no, 
So far we've had a grand total of 14 Far Cry games and spin-offs. There was no clamour for a 15th. Far Cry has almost Skyrim levels of rehashing going on. Is Far Cry 6 an improvement on previous Far Cry games? Fuck no, it's one of the worst so far in my opinion. So if nobody needed another Far Cry game because we had plenty and this one can't be justified by arguing that it's better than all the previous ones, for what problem is this the solution? Far Cry 6 got made because money. Ubisoft wanted some more money and cranking out this pile of fuck and piss was as good a way as any. Besides, it won't tarnish the brand. The brand is already ruined. It won't tarnish Ubisoft's reputation. They are already famous for weak sequels, asset flipping and monetization, And choking girls out in bars. Ha! <laughs> slipped another one in there. It's bound to be a financial success even if it's just a make work scheme to keep Ubisoft Shanghai and other small outsource studios busy. Ubisoft had to put something on the shelves to sell. So why not this no brainer of a game? I can't help but feel that Far Cry peaked with Far Cry 3 and Far Cry Blood Dragon and every sequel is a Ubisoft internal competition to regain that former glory. Don't take my word for it, it's even referenced in Far Cry 6. Near the start you do a cookie cutter quest directly based on a famous former quest where the game quips about the fact that it's a homage. And maybe, internal to the company, just maybe that's all Far Cry is to Ubisoft these days. It's a company endorsed pissing contest where game directors take turns trying to beat the highest piss mark on the toilet walls. I'm well, sorry to break the news to these guys, but Dean Evans and Alexandra Latendra set the record in 2013, and since then it's just been some weak efforts and a hell of a lot of pissed on shoes. I have no doubt that the developers working on Far Cry 6 are experts at what they do, but maybe this is part of the problem. Increasingly, what they do is asset flip old IP, play it safe and build giant pedo cash and microtransaction emporiums. Far Cry 6 felt like the third or fourth time I've been sold the same car painted different ways, with increasingly poor fucking service. The wheel trim and paint job might have changed, but it's still the same damn car. Why should I keep paying to have a whole new car just to have the same vehicle return to me with a different cosmetic appearance? Sure, it's different paint, the music on the annoying radio has changed, it's got new seat covers. I'd probably be okay to pay for that shit as a DLC, but as an entirely new game? Look, at this point my honest advice to Ubisoft is simply this. Cut out the middleman. Seriously, just cut out the fucking middleman. Just release one final video game called Ubisoft Open World Asset Flipper. Just combine a game building toolkit with all your video game assets. Then players can simply build their own shitty video games using all of Ubisoft's old assets and pre-built mechanics. I mean, that's all that Ubisoft does these days. Only with Ubisoft's open world asset flipper, players might actually have a chance to create something interesting. And Ubisoft just has to come around every week and refresh the microtransaction offers. Far Cry Valhalla with a Terminator crossover. Ghost Recon Watch Dogs where you can buy outfits from Assassin's Creed. The possibilities for rehashing worn out fatigued and unoriginal ideas are endless. And before someone says it, I know, I really shouldn't be giving them any ideas. I was looking forward to reviewing this game for many reasons. None pleasant. But I can't stress enough that whenever I'm about to take a giant dump on a video game from Orbit, secretly, I hope to be surprised. 
It's a delight when I'm limbering up to shit on a game and I'm stopped dead in my tracks by being kind of good. Well, this ain't good. And in fact, it's slightly worse than bad. And somewhere under all of this is a few seeds of good ideas that got totally mangled by Ubisoft's inability to shift out of the cookie cutter mindset that is Ubisoft's own very peculiar corporate wasting disease. Let's make it about insurgency, but have fancy dress costumes. Let's make it about revolution, but style the uprising on Instagram hipsters and out of work baristas. Let's ground it in human struggle but make the combat totally ridiculous and cartoony. It's time Ubisoft shat or got off the pot. They need to let developers take bold steps to evolve this franchise into something better or just concede defeat and just reskin it every year and rename it Far Cry Reskin Number 7 and charge us a DLC fee. The die-hard fans of this franchise don't care either way by the way they will play this game every year, whatever the fuck they do. Fuck, they would play a trombone if it had Far Cry logo on it. But Ubisoft ain't going to be getting any new fans in the future unless they do better. And they ain't going to win hearts and minds by lazily shoehorning a rat on a roller skate into the game and just assuming that they will win the cripple dog sympathy vote. Far Cry 6 speaks about freedom of expression rising up and ending oppression, trivialises guns, war on weaponry, but it was clearly made by a generation of internet activists who hate firearms and the second amendment have probably never even been in a real fight, let alone a war, never held a gun, they support internet censorship and probably think there are genuine parallels between Anton Castillo and their own western governments. Far Cry 6 is what happens when you let a bunch of coffee shop revolutionaries make a video game about revolution. The politics makes no sense, the firearms and combat makes no sense and the foot soldiers are expendable pawns in some rich girls game of dress up Barbie daddy issues insurgency. And you ride a fucking zebra. I walked away from this game thinking Anton Castillo is the good guy in this story. I wish him the very best of luck whipping this bunch of hipster scum into shape. Seriously, I hope he beats the revolutionaries into submission and sends them all to the toxic plantations where they belong. Those tattooed posing freeloader cretins deserve worse. Because despite the game constantly trying to show the player montages of soldiers killing civilians, the revolutionaries kill vastly more people than the regime. Seriously, I saw more innocent civilians blown up, run over and shot accidentally than I saw executed by Castillo's men. These self-professed liberators are as sadistic and obnoxious as the villains, which is perhaps a valuable lesson for life as well as this game. But for now, good luck and happy hunting.